as I get myself into the bunker of isolation. I have to think back on happier days and back on a little critter that helped me get through hard times before. Not that it did anything special, just that I learnt a bit of the philosophy of the koala which helped me through these times when I had to koala my way through things. So I'm going to draw a koala, tell you a few interesting facts about the koala and keep myself sane in lockdown. So as you can see here I've just started penciling it out. I'm starting out like a drawing and here's a bit of paintbrush just to kick off with. I was only going to put a few guidelines on but it's almost addictive. I find fine detail calming and relaxing. And for those who are watching, you know, try it sometime. Even if you draw a piece which doesn't even work out, you can just sort of enjoy relaxing, knocking out the details. I'm using traditional art materials like Indian ink, fine paintbrush, nibs. Okay, so one of the things that people do not know about koalas. See, I worked with them for quite a while. And sometimes Australians joke to people from other countries that they drop bears, that they'll drop on you and savage you and things like that. And of course they don't, they'll run away from people. However, quite a lot of zookeepers who work with koalas have an interesting scar. It looks a little bit like an equals symbol. If you see that scar on somebody's face or hand, and they're a zookeeper, you can probably guess that either they've worked with a koala or a wombat. Especially the koala has two front incisors, top and bottom, and they work like chisels. And so while I, I've got scars on my body from devils and I think one from a quoll, yeah, I've been bitten by lots of things. Uh, I got bitten by a koala once and narrowly escaped, but I did work with a guy who had a little equal sign on his face and it was a scar, one of the worst scars I've seen, and it came from a koala. Apart from having claws that are like fish hooks, which is not that bad, apart from that, they're cute gorgeous little things. So yeah, that's an interesting fact about koalas, they can be nasty. But then again, if you ever watch that Star Wars movie where those teddy bears blow up stormtroopers, it's not that far of a stretch of imagination, surely. Time to chuck on some watercolour. So wet the page, nice big bold brush strokes like I don't give a damn. The thing with watercolour is it's a bit of a wild animal itself really, it just does its own thing. Sometimes you just lay down the watercolour, sit back and watch the show, see what happens. See where it's going to settle. If you don't like it you can go over a bit. That's why I don't go completely dark to start with. I was only hitting a mid-tone because I want the background to be fairly dark so it's little white fluffy ears will show. The soft fur is very, very thick and if they snuggle up into a little ball and it rains, the rain just runs off and they tend not to get wet down to the skin. It's just so thick it just beads on the outside of the fur and drips off. And also the, along their back their fur is fairly dark. So when the cold they'll huddle up too. I've seen ice on their back. But then in the sun it dries out really quick. So I'm putting down a mid-tone on this koala now. But I will lighten bits up. Because when you start working with colour you've got to start working with what we call values. Values is how dark and how light a colour is. Here I'm putting a tissue to its nose. It's one of the things with watercolour is you think a bit too much. Put the tip of a tissue on and mop it up. Now I'm laying down a bit of a grey in the ears because I want to lay down white. So that white has to bounce off something. So the grey is the mid-tone so I can go up to the white to the highlights. Same with the chin and especially the chest. Now one of the things about koalas is the white underneath and there's a reason for that too. If they get too hot they lay on their backs, open up their arms, expose all the white fur to the sun so they don't have to move. And this is part of koala philosophy. You see, they eat a food source which doesn't give them a lot of energy. So they sleep for 18 to 21 hours a day. When they're awake, they're usually eating. They defecate, which actually smells quite good actually when I've had to pick up their droppings. And they go back to sleep again. So they have this attitude of don't waste energy, 
of course you're not eating much energy so rather than going to another food source and getting a lot of energy they just stay on their food source they're on which is the eucalyptus leaf and they will just relax so there's been times in my life when I haven't had much money how am I going to get to the next payday and the answer is don't go out don't waste money don't waste petrol and just koala yourself through a few days now we're in lockdown we're going to have to koala ourselves through a few months but hey still got art supplies and toilet paper I'll be right so here I am putting little white highlights on so you see I laid the gray down so the white will show up a little fine nib work that I did barely showing through but just enough to give it a bit of texture and once again I'm going to play with the values here just to the left of the animal I'm going to darken up the background so those fluffy ears stand out even more I'm laying down a bit of watercolor pencil then I'll come in with a bit of dark watercolor and really off the darkness up on that side because I want that ear to really stand out so you pick your light source the light source is coming from the right and on the left is a bit of darkness which makes the ears show out a bit so once I've done the background here I'm going to have to work on the face a bit lighten up one side darken the other overemphasize those bits the other interesting thing you might not have known about a koala although a lot of people probably do is that it's very closely related to a wombat if you look under all that fluff you can kind of see a wombat face there can't you because the skeleton of a wombat and the skeleton of the koala look almost identical just very fine features like sharper teeth different hand construction at the front for gripping branches but a normal common wombat is coarse wiry fur because it digs hole and it doesn't want to get knots in its fur so this koala would have a hell of a time if it tried to dig a hole it just have dreadlocks so here I'm going over a little bit of that detail in the ear again I'm using pure white if I was going to spend more time on this I probably wouldn't use a pure white but it's just a quick illustration so on a ratty piece of cardboard but I don't want to spend too much time on it it's not like it's an expensive piece of paper or anything like that but you don't always need the best art supplies to create art it's more about just creating art really I confess I wasn't really sure how this was going to turn out and like a lot of my art about halfway through you think oh, I should give up on this but you push through and it kind of works and the fact that it's not on the best paper it's kind of a bit of a practice go probably helps me relax a bit and that probably makes it better whereas if it was um, if it was on more expensive paper I'd probably be a little bit stiffer and might not free up as well well there you go there's the finished koala stay safe ladies and gentlemen and keep a social distance and stay home and draw